here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's April 6 here in Seoul. I'm Shin Yeun, and this is News Generation, where we make the news at Arirang's very own open studio. Every morning, we'll discuss the top issues and latest current affairs affecting people in their 20s and 30s. Joining me in the studio is Choi ji Good morning, Anne. And Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. And both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. And we're going to start with our news feed, a news feed which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 20 24 hours. Now, Tongsoft Foods has decided to recall some of its coffee mixes because it turns out that some products had silicon-based materials mixed into them during the production process. The company said it had immediately reported the incident to the Korean Food and Drug Safety Ministry voluntarily. Moving on to the second one, police have actually arrested a 49-year-old woman who handed out drinks containing illicit drugs near cram school in Seoul's Gangnam-gu district. This woman was accused of holding a tasting event, promoting a drink that could strengthen students' memory and concentration levels. The bottle had the name of a famous pharmaceutical company, with information saying that it's good for ADHD, but police later found illicit drug elements. And the government has decided to review stronger measures against school violence. This includes maintaining records of school bullying in both the early and regular college admission processes, also keeping these records until employment. Now, why don't we talk more in depth about the last item? The People Power Party held a policy consultation meeting at the National Assembly yesterday. Officials there called for strength and support for victims of school violence, and school bullying has garnered na nationwide attention in politics when the presidential office canceled the appointment of a new national investigation chief, Chung Sun Shin, in February, after revelations surfaced of his son's school bullying. Now, I would like to ask our panelists here in the studio what they have to think about this. So, Walter, the government is trying to fuel more efforts to tackle school violence. What do you think about this? So obviously, it's a great idea. I think I agree wholeheartedly. There is one thing, if I could be devil's advocate, is, you know, some people do make mistakes in their lives. And let's just say sometimes bullying just doesn't come from a person who is just trying to be mean, sometimes there's a reason that they're bullying and sometimes they're peer pressured into bullying. So that could ruin that person's future when maybe they never really felt like bullying at all. But other than that, I definitely agree with this situation. I empathize to your love for hu humanity mm. and your you know, optimism, but I do think that there's no excuse for school bullies at all. And that's why I'd like to ask you, Chihi, though the government is trying to take a more strong-headed approach, are you on board with this idea? Oh, yes. I also mm. have a very strong-headed approach towards this. I'm a strong advocate of the move. I think what's presented, like the violent uh, attitudes and the uh, behavior that people show in their childhood, they are manifested throughout their adulthood as well. So there should be no excuse for any right. type of bullying. I mean, many of the victims live in tragedy after getting mm. bullied throughout their adult uh, adulthood as well as throughout their life. And even though some say that it could be a scarlet letter on those who just made little mistakes when they're younger, I don't think there should be an excuse because why do we even have to consider their right when the victim's rights, those uh, who were bullied and had no choice mm. to live in and tragedy right. uh, they had no they had no prior consent from the bullies mm. when they were bullied and became victims it's definitely not a easy issue to talk about right. for sure and we've seen like violence really evolve over the past few years mm -hmm. school violence has gone to a level that authorities are finally thinking of ways to actually penalize them so they know that this can damage the rest of their lives and that was our news feed for this thursday moving on to today's topic TikTok challenges. Now, some have been considered very extreme and risky to the point that doctors are concerned. So take a look at the screen to find out what they are. Some require you to pass out. Some require you to pinch or slap yourself. Some go as far as to encourage excessively drinking over-the-counter medication like Benadryl for a hallucinogenic high. These are just a few of the dangerous TikTok challenges that experts are trying to regulate, fearing that they could put users at risk. With some countries trying to ban this Chinese-owned video app over security concerns, regulators are also demanding there be more measures to limit dangerous challenges from trending. Today, NewsGen looks at three questions. One, how do these dangerous TikTok challenges go viral? Two, it seems like a lot of people taking part in them are young. Why is this so? Three, what type of regulations should be implemented to stop these risky challenges from spreading in the first place?
So a growing number of countries around the world are trying to ban TikTok. Recently, Australia joined other countries from the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance, such as the United States, Britain and Canada, in banning the Chinese-owned app on government devices. Though there's no evidence to suggest that Beijing has actually accessed TikTok user data, more demand for bans are on the horizon. And another demand is that more regulations are put in place to stop dangerous challenges from trending. So we're going to be focusing on that. And I would first like to ask Tihi, introduce to us what this global TikTok panic is about. Right. So like you said, many countries around the world are thinking of or discussing uh, introducing acts to actually ban this type of social media platform, TikTok, mm -hmm. and this includes the United States. But the main reason is the security and privacy related concerns. Uh, and so, but then other than this, there's also another concern that too many harmful or dangerous challenges or content are going viral as well on TikTok, which is part of the reason why uh, they're thinking of banning mm -hmm. this particular app. The so-called French scar challenge in particular has gone viral on this media platform recently. And this is where youngsters, they actually make real scars on their faces mm -hmm. and share them online. So they're basically, uh, this is a form of self-harm and they're basically making this go viral. They're encouraging each other to make scars on their faces, which right. isn't something to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. really. And the prevailing TikTok panic right now is more, it has to do more with privacy concerns, but there is still more demand that they regulate the content that actually vi is being viral there. And that's why I would like to ask you, Walter. Mm -hmm. See, he mentioned the French scar challenge recently, yeah. but what are some other challenges that really, you know, caused a lot of concern? Well, I guess I have to be honest as well, because I'm a little hypocritical as I also stupidly ate like spicy ramen when it was a very big trend at the time. Um, some people actually still eat those spicy foods and therefore they become quite sick. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to be as uh, controlled as possible. But yes, as Jihee mentioned, the French scar challenge is one of the most recent harmful and I guess quite dangerous challenges. But this is actually not new. Well, mm -hmm. The stupid challenges have been trending even before TikTok was uh, born right. on other social media platforms. I know that in Australia, at least, we had what was called the planking challenge, mm -hmm. which went viral around Facebook at the time or MySpace, where people would plank or like lay down flat. And some people would do it on the edge of an apartment building. And there have been cases where people fell off and died. Um, also, you might have heard recently the NyQuil chicken challenge mm -hmm. where they marinated in this cough and flu medicine and ate it. Um, the blackout challenge, as we heard before, which is where you'd pass out or you'd make your, you'd trick yourself basically until you pass out. And also the Tide Pod challenge where you would eat washing detergent. It's very, very silly. While researching this, I thought, though, it, I was quite surprised about how many different challenges there were and how dangerous they could be. But what I also found out was it started everywhere. There, some started in the States, some started in Canada, but then the most important part was it went viral. So it went global, right? But Tiki, are there any challenges that started here in Korea first? Yes, there is. Um, there's what's called the fire heart. Mm -hmm. So it's literally a heart that is made of fire. So what these youngsters in the country have been doing, and this has gone viral online, is that they use flammable powder to create the shape of a heart mm -hmm. and they light it and uh, it would just f burn and create in the shape fire. Of a fire. Yes, in, in the shape of a heart. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could look fun. Uh, youngsters enjoy these reckless activities, but this has the potential to create a huge fire. Right. And especially during dry seasons. I mean, it's raining the whole day today, which mm -hmm. is a very welcoming news. Mm -hmm. But before, we've been seeing a very dry season. Right. And we've seen wildfires mm -hmm. as well. So these uh, plays could really be dangerous. And it could even harm the students who are engaged in the activity as well. Mm -hmm. And they might might start off thinking, oh, this is really pretty, this mm. is really nice, it's good for TikTok, but there's a lot of safety hazards behind this. Exactly. And that's why the biggest question I had was, why are people doing these things? Like, yeah. who are they? Is someone pushing them to do this? Like, who are behind these challenges? And I'm personally curious mm. as to whether you've tried any of them mm. or whether your friends have. Mm. Well, I think it's more to do with the peer pressure and mm. influence, as well as mere curiosity among youngsters. 
Uh, I mean, engaging in these reckless activities uh, and the youngsters, their urge to kind of rebel against the world, their parents mm -hmm. and the adults, it could be understandable because they don't know of the seriousness and right. the realistic consequences behind these activities mm -hmm. when they're young. I mean, I also have an experience when I was really young. Really? Yes, what I, did you do? <laughs> I was seven international age, mm -hmm. eight Korean age. Uh, it's going to change in May, yeah. but anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, I actually tried to make a campfire with some dry hay, mm -hmm. and I used a lighter to light the hay and uh -huh. create a campfire. Uh -huh. But I accidentally threw in the lighter with <gasps> the dry hay. Oh, no. And the friend next to me, uh, his bangs burned a little. <laughs> but so his hair was on fire. He, no, it wasn't on fire, but it, it was too hot. Uh -huh. and he was leaning forward that the heat kind of burned it sizzled his, his hair yes it sizzled his hair I'm sorry my friend <laughs> but the thing is um, everybody was safe oh but gosh, I just good. wanted to mention that I understand that youngsters want to engage in these activities thinking that it's fun but it could be really dangerous so they should really be taught it definitely the is and yeah. the reason why this is such a big concern is that so many young users on TikTok are following them right Walter right well, I mean as G he mentioned about the youngsters being rebellious it's usually boys involving in this <laughs> sort of uh, behavior as a male myself I grew around other stupid males who wanted to see us do stupid things um, I actually have scars all over my body oh, from no. that sort of stuff, you know, where we would encourage each other to do dumb things. Mm -hmm. in, granted, in my younger day, we didn't have social media. We were just doing it for attention or for a laugh. But the younger generation now, I think, are doing it for attention seeking, mm. in my opinion. So many want to be that social media famous. So they want anything for attention. So they will right. go to these certain extremes. And then you have people who encourage them. They don't really care about the creator. They don't really care about their well-being. They just want to see them do something stupid for their own amusement. Right. It seems like going viral these days is, is almost turned into a drug where people will do mm. anything to get it. And once they've got, let's say, a viral video, they want to continue getting viral videos right. and be bigger and bigger. You're hooked onto it. Right, exactly. And with the abundance of content out there, I feel like people are going on really extreme measures to catch a lot of people's attention. But this is what we think about the situation. Why don't we now include an expert and hear what she has to say on this matter? All right, we're now going to hear from a digital well-being specialist to find out why users are so susceptible to falling into these trends and what type of regulations should be enforced. Let's hear from Dr. Joanne Orlando in Sydney, Australia. Great to have you here, Dr. Orlando. Hi, thanks. All right, so Dr. Orlando, what's the psychology or explanation behind many young people following dangerous TikTok trends? Yeah, well, if you think there's about 1.4 billion users of TikTok worldwide and about 1 billion of those are teenagers or young adults. So it's a very youth led app. So the whole idea behind these trends is it's become now part of youth culture. Just as you were saying, it's something that uh, young people talk to each other about. It's something that they're part of. It's very much part of their world. And it's become that way for two other reasons. One is if you think of adolescence or, or young adulthood, it's the time in life when you take risks. You know, you do things that are pushing the boundaries a bit as you move between childhood and adult. So it is a risky time. So any kind of risky challenge, you know, really kind of meets their needs. Um, and the second one is, if you want to get noticed on a platform like TikTok, it's very hard to just upload any kind of video and for people to see it and it get likes. But if you jump on board with a TikTok trend, then you're more likely to have your video noticed mm -hmm. for it to get likes and for it to be pushed around and maybe, if you're lucky, get viral. So it's very quickly become the way that you actually can get noticed on such a massively big platform. 
Right. It's interesting how uh, it's the time of the period for children to really take risks, engage mm. in that risky behavior. And like Walter said earlier, many want to engage in these reckless activities because they want to get noticed. Yeah. And I think the platform itself, the algorithm there, you know, if you use these hashtags that have the name of these challenges, you go quickly viral, which I think ex expedites the process of making it trending. But I have another question. It's actually how dangerous these challenges could be. You know, did anyone actually die or become hospitalized after trying to follow one of these challenges? Oh, no, absolutely. Now, some of these challenges are just fun, like cooking challenges and things like that. Some of them go wrong. As you were saying before, you know, you don't think it's a dangerous challenge, but because you're 12 or 13 years old, you don't have the life skills behind you to know that this kind of situation is potentially, uh, is potentially dangerous. Mm -hmm. But some are straight out dangerous there's no doubt about it so something like the blackout challenge where you really just had to hold your breath until you passed out and video yourself do that and then upload that video now that's without a doubt even to a child that's without a doubt a dangerous trend it's one that a lot of people are taking uh, part in it keeps re-emerging on TikTok. And most recently, we've seen deaths uh, with younger people around 12, 13, 14, who, who are taking part in these more risky challenges while realising they're dangerous, but not realising how dangerous they are. they are. So TikTok are being called up against these kinds of dangerous trends and, and uh, are being asked to remove these kinds right. of videos as a way of discouraging taking part in these kinds of dangerous situations. Yeah, it sort of just reminds me of that time. And since you're also in Australia, remember the time that the planking challenge did happen. It was yeah. st it started off as something very, very basic, and then people would take it to extremes, and then eventually someone died. That's right. right. They take it to the extreme so they get noticed. So the more risky, the more crazy your video is, the more likely the people are to, to notice it and like it. So that's kind of a strategy people are taking to get noticed. Right. And right now, the TikTok panic has also stirred debate over whether it's OK for governments to regulate things happening on the open Internet, though this might be safe. Considering this, do you think it would still ensure like a free Internet? You know, people use TikTok and social media platforms to freely express themselves and have fun. But if the government comes in and if social media platforms start regulate th regulating them, this could sort of, you know, lessen the entertainment they can find here. What are your thoughts on this? That's right. It's tough. It's the first time we've been in this kind of situation, isn't it? Where we've had such an open kind of platform to express ourselves, but it's also causing us a lot of harm. It's doing both. So as you said, governments are trying to reel this in and we're seeing countries around the world, Australia included where I am, who are starting to restrict TikTok on like government issued devices. But that's only a small number of devices and kids don't have government issued devices. Right. So part of the reason is the huge amount of data that they collect and, and who is owning that data and, and what's being done with it. But I think, you know, I think TikTok is part of the, the issue there in that we don't know where that data is going. But also, more broadly, all the social media platforms and just about all the apps are collecting quite sensitive data about us. So I think one strategy that needs to take place is that governments actually start to issue bans on apps being able to collect that kind of sensitive data about us, TikTok, but all the other apps included. Um, and then I think with the dangerous challenges, you know, they're not necessarily going to stop. Like TikTok have been fined multiple times around these kinds of challenges and they're taking them off the videos and they're being fined. So it's kind of a catch-22 situation. It's not working. So I think for particularly for young people, I think a lot of their parents don't know about these challenges and they don't know what's happening on TikTok or haven't necessarily even used TikTok themselves. So I think it's really important for parents to become a little bit more familiar with this particular platform because mm -hmm. that's the one their children are using and their teenagers and right. to get an understanding of the trends so that they can actually talk to their children about it. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Orlando. Those were very good tips and a wonderful insight. Thank you.
All right. We're going to move on and hear what our viewers had to say about our topic of the day as well. So we asked them what they thought about our discussion topic and we chose three of their comments. So if you take a look at the screen, you'll see what they had to say. Steph Manfredi said the best one was the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge in 2014. But there's some that are deadly that everyone needs to avoid, like the back cracking challenge. Animal Agrawal said challenges are good to push boundaries, but it's just that their quality seems to bank more on primitive human functions rather than for a goal that can be considered valuable. Not to mention, of course, some are fatal, like the Skull Breaker Challenge. And WS Gaspera said the pros are it's the pros are it's an ego boost. Experiments and experiences. The cons are, of course, the access for people you didn't know you didn't want in your life, scammers, the normal addiction, and marketing addictions we should attempt to curb. Now, I would like to combine what we've heard from our Skype interview and our viewers' comments and, you know, lead the final discussion, I guess. So let's head into our final thoughts now. Where do you guys stand in terms of regulating TikTok and the content that's being shared there? Well, I personally think we should regulate these content, especially uh, that are being uploaded on TikTok and other social platforms, media platforms as well. Uh, I mean, it could be a uh, infringement of maybe freedom of expression right. online. However, uh, because some of these challenges could be very dangerous, it is the responsibility of the regulators to really uh, at least provide stricter guidelines on what content should be uploaded and what shouldn't be. So I think to a certain extent, regulation is needed mm -hmm. for these platforms. Definitely. And what about you, Walter? Yeah, obviously, I 100% agree with Chi. Uh, but it's also a very difficult debate to have of how much should we regulate something. I mean, we've seen the situation with Elon Musk and Twitter. He bought it just so he could be a bit more free right. open on the platform. Um, but then obviously things happened where it exacerbated the situation. Now, do we, does it violate, I guess, freedom if we're not, you know, uh, allowed to upload what we want, even though it might be dangerous? Who knows? I think stupid things like eating Tide Pods, example, mm. should be obviously banned. It's a dumb thing to do. But what can we do? Do we need to raise the age? Do we need to have like a social media license? I mean, I know that recently the state of Utah passed a law that is giving a curfew for under 18s between 10.30 p.m. and 6.30 a.m. Do we need to start somewhere like that? Right, and Walter, I think you could relate because you're now a father of a beautiful daughter. <laughs> and as Dr. Orlando mentioned, it's really it's a big responsibility for the parents as well to understand what's being shared on these platforms, right? That's correct, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing is like, do we look at the parents now for the situation? Now, as a parent myself, I will have to deal with that when she gets old enough to go on uh, whatever platform platform will be at that time. But as an example, when I was younger and I had certain, you know, I was irresponsible every day as a young teenage boy, but my parents would take things away from me and I could not use them. Mm. And this is where I think that maybe parents need to stand and make a responsible act so that their children don't get hurt or even die. Definitely. It's important that parents look after their kids on this matter, but it's also the social media platforms that receive commercial benefits from content going viral, so it should be their big responsibility and a top agenda. Now, we'll be here every day from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Korea time, bringing you the topics that young people are talking about. Special thanks to Che ji Thank you. And Walter Lee. Always happy to be here. And thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are... News Generation. Generation.